Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. And I'm so pumped that you are here joining me today. I know that you've got a busy schedule, so we're going to jump right into today's standard, which is MA.5.NSO.2.1. MA stands for math or mathematics if you wanna be fancy. Five stands for fifth grade. NSO is for number sense and operations. And then two, we're working on the operations side. Point one is our standard for today. So let's see what this standard says. Um, by the way, before we see what the standard says, the following document that I'm using is not something that I created. The Florida Department of Education releases this document to the public. And what I'm doing is just showing you how I use what they provide to break down the standards so they make sense for me. And then from there, we have taking on the best resources for you and your students to use. Okay, so the standard says we are going to multiply we are going to multiply. <laughs> well, technically we are because we'll be teaching it. However, our students will be expected to multiply multi-digit whole numbers using a standard algorithm with procedural fluency. And I wrote a three right there because you'll probably start to notice in the best standards that the first stage is more of an exploration stage. The second stage is with procedural reliability, they call it. And that's where we as teachers help to guide them into a strategy that might work for them. And then stage three is where they're able to say, oh, multiplying multiple digit numbers, mm, I've got this and here's how I'm gonna throw it down. So this is the, hey, I've got this level of it. Next are some related benchmarks or the horizontal alignment, basically some other benchmarks in fifth grade that align with the benchmark we're discussing today. Um, the state of Florida has said that MA.5.FR.2.2, which is multiplying fractions. That makes sense because we'll be multiplying whole numbers and then translating that into multiplying fractions. MA.5.AR.1.1 is multi-step real world problems where we will multiply multi-digit whole numbers. M.1.1 is a measurement conversions and you know we do a whole lot of multiplying and dividing when we're multi when we're performing those conversions of measurements. That's a lot of zha, 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 measurement conversions. Uh, 5.gr. Okay, all of these right here are volume standards as you can see. Okay, and then next we have terms to pay attention to from the K through 12 glossary that the Department of Education provides. There is equation, which means that there's an equal sign present. An expression means that there's no equal side present. So it'd be like one side of the equation, but there's no equal sign. And then whole number is um, zero, one, two, three, and so on and so forth. No negative numbers, no fractions, no decimals with this standard. All right. Now I love seeing where they should be coming from. And in fourth grade, we've got a couple standards that focus on multiplication. 2.1 is just mastering those facts. 2.2 and 2.3 are where they do start to practice multiplying up to three digit whole numbers by two digit whole numbers. So they should be coming to you with some experience there. And as of recording this video, this is the first year of the best standards implementation in Florida for third, fourth, and fifth grade. So um, while they might not come with these standards, the knowledge that is to be expected from these standards, the common core standards did have the expectation that students would be able to multiply multi-digit whole numbers as well. So they should be coming with some experience here. And then in sixth grade, 
they will be required to multiply and divide positive numbers with decimals, which some of this right here used to be a fifth grade standard when we had the common core standards in Florida. So now that's not really, we'll get into decimals a little bit, but it's more at the exploration level. You'll see that soon in an upcoming video. All right, if we scroll down to the purpose and instructional strategies, this is where I actually love this because it provides more clarification with the standard. And I just am going to point out a few things that jumped out at me. So again, this standard is calling for procedural fluency, which means that students may choose the standard algorithm that works best for them and demonstrates their procedural fluency. What I'm taking away from this is that students can choose whatever strategy works best for them as long as they understand what they're doing and it's using strategies that are based on place value like it makes sense um, here it says put a star here there is no limit on the number of digits for multiplication in fifth grade now it does say no limit here um, and taking on the best it's not that I put a limit on it, but I had to stop the video somewhere. I had to stop the skill level somewhere. So just know that um, we'll go we'll go through it in a minute, but there is no limit in the standard and we'll see how that comes into play in the videos in just a second. Uh, da, da, da. When a student uses standard algorithm, they should be able to justify why it works conceptually. We talked about that. Students should be able to estimate solutions before solving. There's a lot of intentional estimation in taking on the best. So I've got you covered there. Um, let me see. Okay. Then for the common misconceptions or errors right here, it says that it would be helpful if students could engage in error analysis activities. And I just wrote down math misconception mystery because I've got you covered there where your students will be actively engaged in error analysis activities. Here for the instructional tasks and items, I just was pointing out that this problem has a three digit by two digit example. And here there is a four digit by two digit example. And I just wrote that I wish that there were more examples so we could see does this go up to a three digit by three digit or higher because it does say no limits. My guess would be that we would stay pretty close to these limits. Um, but the standard does say there is no limit. So we have to take that into consideration for sure. Okay, that's it with breaking down the standard. We know we're multiplying multi-digit whole numbers without a limit using a standard algorithm. So now let's see what resources you have available to you. So here we are at McCarthy Math Academy, the website. You can go to this tab right here. It says members enter here or the white box right here that says members enter here. Click that. Click on taking on the best and we're in fifth grade which strand it's NSO scroll down to 2.1 where it says multiply whole numbers by up to three digits so in taking on the best I had to put a boundary somewhere um, but again there is no limits okay so here are the bronze resources your video lessons all right and then the printable workbook pages. So you can see that I've deconstructed this with the following video lessons. Multiply whole numbers by one digit. Then let's extend that to multiplying whole numbers by two digits. Then let's extend that to multiplying whole numbers by three digits. And if you needed to keep going to four digits, once we get to this by three digits, students will start to see the pattern. So if we needed to continue, we could. Again, the standard says there is no limits. We have to assume that the possibility of it continuing is out there. Um, when you watch the video lesson, you can just easily print out the printable right beside it. Here we have a four digit by three digit. You can see that we practice estimating first and then I do use the typical standard algorithm here, which your students could totally follow along with in the video. And then if when it comes to the silver resources with the extra practice, remember the standard says that your student that your students can use whatever strategy works for them as long as they understand what it is that they're doing and it's based on place value and it makes mathematical sense, right? So they can, again, they can perform the standard algorithm here, and then if they like the area model better, that's fine. That's the one that, that they would consider to be their form of standard algorithm. 
Um, okay. So those are your bronze videos and resources. If you have the silver plan, just click here. And it, if you have it, it will open up. If it does not, then you don't have it and that's okay. Um, which by the way, if you want to upgrade anytime, that's cool too. Just let me know. Click here for your bronze resources. You can go right back, but these are your silver resources. And in the silver package, you have all the printables right there, including the video guide. So everything's right there for you. Um, the answer keys and then the math misconception mystery video, which is that error analysis video that I was talking about. So click your printables and okay. There you can see, we've got the video icon right there. We know that this is a video lesson that's located in the bronze section, multiplying. And then we have an extra practice page for this skill right there. So one digits and then bumping it up to multiplying by two digits two digits tripping over my words and we have extra practice there video lesson for multiplying by three digits and then an extra practice here again we're practicing estimating first which the standard called for and then the standard algorithm then here is the math mission and that takes the whole standard and puts it together into a more um and to a problem that requires more thinking from the student. So part one says you ch use each card one time to multiply a three digit whole number by a two digit whole number to create a product less than tw 23,000. <laughs> part two, Claire uses the cards to create this expression. See how there's no equal sign there? and believes that this arrangement creates the greatest possible product. Do you agree with Claire? Explain your thinking. So, so there is your math mission there. You can, and then we have the math misconception mystery episode. This one says, what is the product of 2,479 times 68? Um, the video, which is located right here on the silver page, uh, the video guides your students through this entire process. So your students will be asked to either solve this problem independently or with their group. And then they're going to watch four characters, which are me dressed up in silly costumes. Three of those characters will make a mistake that students commonly make and only one character will have the most reasonable answer. So as students watch the video, they can pause it after each character presents their work and place their little notes here. And then finally fill out their detective report. The most reasonable answer belongs to this character. And what did the character do that was correct? Identify their error. What do they need to know for next time? So not only are you identifying who was correct, you're thoroughly investigating the other three and explaining the things that they did correct, where their mistake was and what they need to know for next time. Super awesome. Um, so that's your silver, lots of goodies involved there. And if you have the gold, you can click here and it will take you to this page. If you don't have the gold, it just won't open up for you. The main parts of the gold plan are the mini assessment that you get and all of the McCarthy Math 155 videos and printable student guides, all right? Um, you also right here should have a video, the one that you're watching, breaking down the best. If you have the gold package, the perk of being a member in the gold is just that you don't have ads that go with this video. But if you, you might be watching this on a different platform for free and that is totally okay. So let's take a look at the uh, mini assessment. You can see there's a variety of different questions. Okay. All right, there's the test, the mini assessment. And I know that your county probably provides assessments that you have to use or you get to use. Um, but maybe you need some extra practice with those that look more like a test item. So I did want to create that for the gold members. And then McCarthy Math 155. So this was the program that I created before taking on the best. And it's aligned to the Common Core Standards. Um, I wanted to include this because I had a lot of schools asking me if they could still use McCarthy Math 155, so that's why you have it. And with fifth grade, you can click there. And here are all the units that we use when we had the Common Core Standards in Florida. A lot of these skills do trickle into the best standards, and this one does. So here's the multiplication unit, unit one, and we have up to five digits by two digits. We have a review from fourth grade, 
and close reading word problems. There are 10 more video lessons just on multiplication when you click here. So all of these should be good to go. We get two digits by one digit, two digits by two digits. So if you have students that need more practice, then this is your way to go, okay? All right, you just click the video and um, you have the printable right there where they can work out their problem, okay? All right, there's also some word problems here. And we explain why we're multiplying in those word problems, okay? So that's it for breaking down the standard and walking through the resources that you have at your fingertips that are specifically aligned with the standard. So I hope that this was helpful for you. And I feel like I'm tripping all over my words today. But before you go, I absolutely want to remind you that what you wake up and you do every day with your life, it really does matter. Thank you for all that you do for students. I know that many of you are pouring your hearts and your souls into this profession. It's exhausting, it's stressful, but it matters. And we don't really know where our impact is going to take our students, right? But we have to trust that what we're doing is helping them to step into the best version of themselves, that we have to believe in them until they can believe in themselves. You are a rock star, and I will see you real soon. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.